Hi guys and gals, welcome to Mind Wise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors, and I'd like to introduce you to a new little setup that I've made in my studio room, which I'm going to call a room with a review. It's mainly so that I can present some of my ideas, the kit I use, sharing ideas, and also to answer some of your inquiries about how I use my kit, albeit that some of this stuff, especially these cooking utensils that I'm going to be going through briefly in a moment, um, might actually have yourself, but want a slightly different angle. Um, I tend to have a planned idea of what I want from my kit. And as an example, before I actually bought this and made this hobo stove, I already had a sort of a concept idea of how I might want to link the two together, which would have utilised this Dutch army cup, which I'll talk about in a little while. But anyway, let's crack on. It's to do with the stoves. Little folding hexamine stove. As you must be aware, hexamin blocks, these ones are circular, but if they don't come in a pack like this, they'll come about four would make up a rectangular block, so there'd be less of them, but still take up the same amount of space. But I'll talk about the timing of how long one of these will cook for. Let's say it's very convenient, folds up, it's lightweight, it can go in your rucksack, your bum bag, fanny bag, pocket. Secondly, I've got my homemade hobo stove. I made this out of two stainless steel food containers. They both came together as a pair. One was a sugar container and one was a tea bag container or loose tea container. But I'll explain more about the structure and how I made this in a moment. Then we've got this stove, which I've acquired recently. It's stainless steel. It's the Swedish Armia Trangia stove. It's spelt T-R-A-N-G-I-A. -A. Some people call it Trangia, Trangia, um, but from what I've heard from reference, it's got a silent G, so you just call it a Trangia stove. And as I say, I'll explain about the use of that in a moment. Then I've got my old faithful, the dual fuel one-man stove, the 533 model, which takes common stove uh, fuel, and it also takes unleaded petrol. And then we've got this one here, which is the Coleman Dual Fuel Camp Stove, the 424 model. And inside it's got two rings, which is fed with a container outside, which feeds the vapour of the fuel in to obviously ignite and light and control the two elements that are inside. So those are the, the main uh, ones that I use, albeit obviously this isn't... <laughs> It's quite heavy. It's a trap. It's not really a travel uh, pack type of utility equipment, as say maybe these three would be, or especially this one. But I have used this. I originally bought this about just over ten years ago um, when I was going on a bit of an escapade down at St Ives in Cornwall, which is in uh, southwest England, and I was doing a bit of rock climbing down there, a bit of camping. Um, but we were using cars, so of course this would go in the boot of the car, which wasn't a problem at all. So, I'll just put that aside for a moment, because obviously it's a bit bigger and heavy duty. But let's go back to this one, the Coleman Dual Fuel One Man Stove. It fills the petrol in here. It's got the pump action here, which pressurises the air to then create vapour in this vessel that contains the fuel you're going to use. Then you have the little lever at the side, which as you lever it down, it allows the vapour to come through and you ignite it, and then of course it cooks the food. That closes it off, and then you wait for the heat to die down. Okay, we've got the Trangia stove, the Swedish army, which is made of stainless steel. And what I'll do is I'll just open this now and show you a little bit more about it. Here, are two levered stands that lift up, that are hinged on the base, and you can see them there. I'll just put my finger through the middle and I'm moving them around. You open them fully so that they actually rest against the outside edge of the stove stand. It's also a wind uh, breaker as well. It actually protects it from the wind and the breeze. Okay, this unclips. This can be used as a frying pan or a lid. It can be placed in here, like so. Also, we have the main pot and 
billy can, which can be hung on uh, a wagon stick if you're actually going to use it over an open fire, but we're, we're talking in relation to actually using it within the stove mechanism. So here's the actual Trangia stove part, which is filled with methylated spirit, which is poured in here. You then place the wind protector around it, and obviously I wouldn't be cooking from behind it, but so I can present it so you can see it easy. If the frying pan, that would be going on top there. If I were utilising this larger pot, that would fit on there. If you just want to warm stuff up, you can use this as a lid with stuff inside it. You can, of course, place it around the other way, but it's a bit more difficult to get up because you'd either need a knife or something to sort of lift up the edge. So normally it would be used as a lid that way. Okay. I have here an old end of a spoon, which if the flame is coming up a bit too much and you want to die it down because you want to cook or simmer a bit slowly so the food doesn't get burnt onto the surface of whatever pot you're using, then I'll place that just on top there, which then dies the flame down slightly but doesn't actually totally extinguish it. Now I'll just get back to this. As some of you might be aware, on these small methylated spirit alcohol stoves, there's tiny little holes around the side, and what happens is, is the flame is ignited, it then gets hotter, and then starts to heat up the vapour, which then becomes the flame around these little holes. So it's not just like lighting the fuel, and it's just a flame from the fuel. What will tend to happen is the vapour will start to uh, expand around this, this part of the stove itself and then you have this consistent little flame which will normally on average be able to boil this full of water within about 8 to 10 minutes so a sufficient little bit of kit methylated spirit bottle with the obviously the liquid in it now I'll tell you in a moment how I link some of this stuff together so that I can utilise it so it's as versatile as possible. But prior to that, this is my hobo stove that I made myself and I'll break it down and explain it to you in a moment. Okay guys and girls, um, I'm going to call this section to this presentation part one and in part two what I'm going to do is review this stainless steel Dutch Army uh, mug which holds about half a litre and the approach to acquiring this um, utilising it so that it could be adaptable and versatile virtually to all my cooking systems. So I'll be explaining that in kit, um, my cooking utensils, the saucepan, the kettle which all compact into this bag and how I got to actually acquire this and my reasoning behind it and how I actually pack it all together and normally use this bag to put any of these cooking systems in and be explaining about how I utilise the pouch and its practicality and purpose. So, thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate the support. I feel very humbled by the comments and um, inquiries people have given. And um, thank you very much, and I'll be speaking to you soon. I came up with the idea just to sort of have something indoors to present some of my kit. Bullshit. <laughs> Move that one up. Hi guys and gals, welcome to Mind Wise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors. And a welcome, and I'd like to introduce... <laughs> Hi guys, thinking dog made a noise then. Hi guys and gals, welcome to Mind Wise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors. And I'd like you to... <laughs> 